Okay, welcome back. So in the previous video, what I did was I just confirmed that my top dead center, that my that nothing had moved my my uh, marker, my wheel, and I used this this um, piston stop that I bought online. I installed a longer, much longer bolt. Uh, so I can really get down into the uh, into the cylinder, and that worked pretty nicely. I, I think um, I confirmed that my my um, my wire my pointer didn't move at all, or a very small amount. So uh, I was very happy with that, and uh, now I'm going to just uh, kind of confirm that um, I've got the sprocket set in my number one position. Um, which is supposed to be zero, uh, that uh, things uh, look good. Uh, that, that that the cam and the crank are kind of uh, in phase with each other um, to to what they're supposed to be per the spec. Um, this is a Urson cam. It's a pretty nice aftermarket cam. I put the uh, two um, retainers back in. I still have the lighter springs in there, which are nice. Um, I got all the rest of the uh, cylinders vented you know, through the plugs. Um, like I said, I've got the uh, uh, original stock, a new one, uh, chain and sprockets. Uh, if, I, if I want to, I can buy one of the high-performance Japanese sprockets, which is uh, pretty, pretty adjustable. I think it has adjustments every two degrees. Um, here, we'll take a look at the cam cam spec here. So this is the sheet from Mirson. It's a uh, it's a two eighty N grind. You can see here. The uh, rocker arms are using a one point four nine three um, multiplier. And uh, this is what I'm trying to verify right here. This one hundred nine degrees after top dead center um, for the center line of the cam for the intake lobe. Uh, according to all the experts out there, um, this is this is the critical the critical thing to check. And it's rel relatively easy to check. All I have to do is uh, find the maximum amount of uh, lift here at the indicator and then from from that point choose a number and then Try to hit that number on both sides of the lobe, and then we can look at the degree wheel, and the degree wheel will tell us what our two numbers are. We'll add those together, and uh, average those two numbers, and that is our our uh, our number. Here's my uh, dial indicator. You can see I've got it uh, pretty well lined up there. I've got it pretty parallel to the center of the spring itself. I'm going to turn it on here. Always helps to put the push the uh, on off button, uh, but I've got it uh, got it kind of anchored right to the little little bit of material right around the breather tube. That seems to be a really nice spot for it to go. Works out well. And here we go. So I'm going to I'm going to find our maximum amount of lift, and then we're going to use that to do our calculations. <clears throat> so I've done this a couple times, and it looks like 404 is the valve lift that we're looking for. So now I'm on the base circle. And you can see it's measuring 405. Well, it's zero right there. And I have very little bit of a lash. I just have a couple thousandths of lash there. I don't have the I don't have the stock spec for lash. 
All right, when I get to 404, I'm going to zero it. There's my 404, I'm going to zero it. Now I'm going to aim for 50 thousandths. That's what I'm going to try to get. As soon as I get 50 thousandths, and I can go screaming past this if I'm not careful. And we'll, we'll pick another number too, just to kind of confirm it. All right, so 51. Let's go with 51. I am at 140 degrees at 51 on this side. So I am the lobus past center. So I got 140. I'll write that down and here we go so now we're going to go all the way around we're going to hit 51 on the other side and i can check yeah i'm still touching the valve container which is good now i'm going to shoot for 51. See how close I can get. Okay, there's 50. So I am measuring 73. So 140, which is a, which is what I measured the first time, and 73, that is 213. So 213 divided by 2 is 106 and a half. So I'm two and a half, two and a half degrees maybe advanced. So let's uh, let's pick another number. Let's pick um, let's go all the way around again and let's pick uh, 20. Just to give us another number. Just to see if we can we have 403. Ah, went past it. And I'm on the other side, and I am at uh, one, let's say 127 and a half. I'm going to write that down. That's right at 20, 20 and a half. Closer. I know this is exciting stuff, isn't it? Sorry. I just want to see how repeatable this is. I'm an engineer, so I'm a lot of work with repeatability. Okay. So now I'm at. 85. So once again, I'm at 212.5. So divide by 2, <clears throat> right about 106, 106 and change. So I would say it's pretty good. I'm going to leave it. I don't have any more adjustment. If I 
I can adjust, I can advance it. I can only advance it with this particular sprocket. I can't retard it, which is what I'd have to do because right now it's slightly advanced by two degrees or so, depending on how repeatable these numbers are. Um, so I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to leave it right where it's at. I'm going to leave it on that number one uh, timing mark position, and we're going to see uh, we're going to see what happens if I feel like there's too much bottom end and not enough top end then I can go back and I can simply change out this sprocket for something that will give me some adjustment in the other direction anyway thanks for watching bye